Hey everybody, Derek here. I'm here to bring you another video for The Walking Dead Season 5. And uh, today I wanted to do a quick video on why the other survivors are not listening to Rick uh, this season on The Walking Dead. <coughs> um, lately I haven't had too many things to uh, analyze with on The Walking Dead because it seems like they close a lot of storylines off and don't really give a lot to, um, you know, look into and try to guess on and make theories or predict. But I think I want to try to, you know, uh, give a, a few words on this topic. Because it is definitely something that has happened quite a bit this season, where we have had people questioning Rick's, you know, judgment making, and basically flat out telling him that, what he's saying is not the best plan, and there's a different plan, and that this is what we're going to do. And I want to give a couple of thoughts on that. So uh, just in case uh, you're not caught up with uh, Walking Dead up until Episode 7, there may be spoilers in this video. So just in case you don't want to be spoiled, um, don't watch the video, because uh, I will be talking about the plot lines in it. Okay. So I have cited approximately um, three instances this season of when people have not listened to Rick. And the first one was right um, after they escaped from Terminus, Rick wanted to go back with all the guns and shoot everybody. Um, which, you know, I can see that decision in both ways. <clears throat> because on the one hand, um, you know, that would have been a great thing to do. Uh, because obviously only seven of them actually survived long enough in order to, you know, be anything um, against Rick's group, uh, or was it six? But anyways, you get my point. There weren't as many of them, and I think they could have easily taken them out at that time. But on the other hand, you also look at, you know, it is dangerous, and you don't know. Yeah, we find these things out later, but... You know, a lot of people were like, we just got out of there. This place is on fire. We're not going to go risk our lives over something like that. No. Um, and I think that it had a lot to do with, you know, people perhaps being scared in that moment um, and just wanting to get as far away from that place as possible. You know, a lot of people realized that, you know, they were seconds away from getting butchered and eaten. And just, you know, the sheer amount of walkers back there it could have resulted in several people getting killed. I mean, we'll never know. Um, but I think that that was part of the reason why people said no to Rick on that one. So it was more of a practical reason. And I do kind of agree with um, their reasoning behind that. It could have gone either way. But in the end, it, it ended up costing Bob's life. But it could have turned out worse. I mean, more of them could have died if they would have went back. It's It's really hard to say. But... The second instance was when Glenn um, specifically stood up to Rick, basically uh, telling him that he was going to go with Abraham as, as well as Maggie and Tara with Abraham and Rosita and Eugene once it was morning, that they would agree to help out the group, but then they were going to split up so that they could get a group to continue on to Washington, D.C. And Rick was absolutely against this. He wanted to keep the group together. And in the end, he was right about that decision again as well. Now, he couldn't have really, you know, understood the, uh, you know, the underlying facts behind that because obviously Eugene is not, um, you know, the person that people thought he was. You know, they realized that he wasn't the scientist. They never really would have expected that Eugene would have put glass in the, um, you know, the gas tank. I think what Rick was looking more towards was a keeping the group together as strong because when you have everybody together there's a better chance of you being able to defend yourself not only against the walkers but against people and i think now you know i think now more than ever rick is kind of angry in, in a sense inside that glenn and the group you know left because now they only have five people going after beth and carol and they're up against cops who are pretty much trained to be able to handle these kind of situations. And we've seen the, um, the dangers that went with that. Um, you know, you saw right at the end of the episode where the one, you know, knocked Sasha out and left. They're not going to go down easy. 
And if, you know, all heck breaks loose and you see guns getting shot off and everything as a result of this in the mid-season finale, you're going to wish you had, you know, Abraham and Glenn and Maggie and Rosita in order to, and of course, I guess Tara could help as well, to be able to help defend you. And they're not going to have that. And I think that because of that, some people are going to get killed. Um, you know, I've said maybe that Tyrese might get killed uh, in the mid-season finale, and there's been strong indications that Beth might die, um, you know, as a result of, you know, there just not being enough people. And I've often wondered, you know, why did Glenn leave? Um, you know, why would he agree to that? And I think that part of what it comes to with people not listening to Rick, I think is just the changing of the group and being inside the prison has definitely helped some of them develop into leaders of their own, where they realize that, yeah, it was great to have Rick, and it was nice that Rick was there for them to protect them throughout the winter, to find the prison, and to get them through those hard times. But then once they became established and they had a council, people realized, hey, you know, I can actually, you know, make a decision, and I can actually you know, think like a survivor, and, par, par, you know, part of my plan worked, you know, um, and I think that a lot of them see that, and they respect Rick, and they wouldn't mind if Rick was in the decision-making process, but not necessarily being the only person in the group making the decision, so I think that's part of it, and I think another part of it is just that they remember a lot about who Rick was, when he was a leader, and I think that in some ways that it does scare them if he would be, you know, season three crazy Rick, which in some ways I feel like Rick is starting to lose his stability a little bit. Um, we started to really see that in the, in the, excuse me, in the fourth season finale, right after he killed those, uh, you know, the, the claimers, you know, once that happened, I think that, you know, it really, you know, set that switch off again to put him into beast mode Rick. But after the traumatic experiences with Terminus and the Hunters, you know, I think he's once again unhinged and, you know, just thinking about, you know, trying to keep people safe, and trying to get the group going. And if he can't, then it's all on him. It's all his fault. And that's that. And I think that he's taking that on himself again and i think that people subtly are trying to you know get him to get back more towards being somebody like a team player because that's what the group might need and i think that's part of the reason why they um you know turn down his plan which is the third instance of um them not listening to Rick. And I'm not saying that Rick's uh, plan wouldn't have worked. I think that, you know, they came up with a pretty good layout of where everybody was in that hospital. And I think it, it might have worked. Um, the only problem is that I think part of it is I think they needed to delay things a little bit. But I think that after hearing about who these people are, I think that, you know, Tyrese and Daryl and the others kind of realize that these aren't your typical uh, villains. And they really aren't. You know, they're not, the, they're not the nicest people in the world. I am not going to put them on a pedestal. But if I were in a position where I had to be, you know, with the governor's team, the hunter's team, or Grady Memorial, I would rather be on Grady Memorial because at least my chances of, you know, surviving or at least becoming somebody important in that group you know, or at least safe, would go up. You know, they're not necessarily absolutely evil. It's just that Dawn is one of those people who um, is not willing to, you know, stand up for what is right anymore. She's just looking at what is, you know, best for survival. And again, those things can conflict, and it's about what people want in the situation. And I think that if it was a different group of people, you know, who were not, you know, looking for sexual favors from the, the wards, you know, the people who live there, then I think that it would not be as bad of a situation. I think that's what makes it so terrible of a place to be um, is because of what they do. And, you know, ultimately, I think that 
people realize that these are not your typical villains and that they wanted to find a peaceful method. Because, again, with all the killing that's happened lately, I just think that they could all use a break. Because you think about it. A lot of what's happened in the last season and a half, take season four into, you know, season five, episode seven, those events could not have taken place in, within more than two weeks. Um, I don't, I don't exactly, be, I'm not able to count out a day by day by day exactly how long it's been, but there's no way those events took place over more than a period of two weeks. So you have the governor's group be you know killing Herschel and doing what they did at the prison. You have Terminus. You have the Hunters. That's a lot of stuff happening all at once. And I think that this group is you know stronger than they were before. And they realize that you know Rick is not necessarily always going to be the right leader for the right situation. And I think that that's what they're starting to realize is Rick's season three status really doesn't work anymore. Um, you know, with a group this strong and with a group that, you know, is developed. Um, and I think that Glenn was, you know, recognizing that, you know, where Rick was going to assert his control over Abraham. And Abraham's just not that guy that's going to go, okay, cool, you win, Sheriff. I'm just going to go sit in the corner and, uh, you know, whittle with my knife or whatever. Yeah, He's not that kind of a guy. He's going to, you know, stand up for what he believes in. And I think that Glenn is just trying to, in that situation, prevent things from escalating. But he's also kind of sending a message to Rick that, look, Rick, you're not in charge, okay? You are a member of this group just like everybody else, and we respect you, and you have a great input that we're all going to consider because you have done great things for this group and you do deserve to have an input in what is done. You have that ability, but you're not the ultimate shot caller. Um, and I think that, you know, that is a message that Glenn sent to him. And I think that's also a mes message that, you know, Daryl and Tyrese kind of sent in the last episode was, you know, Rick, I, it's subtly they're saying like, well, your plan is good, but that would be a plan we we would want to use against the governor's people, not this group that's trying to, you know, run a, a survival operation. It's, you know, clear at this point that they're willing, that they're probably willing to negotiate based on what Noah said. So I think that a lot of it is, is that, you know, survivors have grown stronger and I think that, you know, Rick is a good leader. It's just that people realize, you know, some of the faults that he had from, you know, season three. And I don't think they want to see him repeat that. They don't blame him. But I think that letting Rick lead would kind of lead him down that path again. But part of me wonders if him not being able to lead is also making him, you know, a little unhinged. Because one of the things that you noticed was in that seventh episode, just, you know, just last night, he was set to kill that cop. And Daryl was like, no, Rick, three's better than two. And I think that in some ways, you know, Rick was like, you know, I'm going to kill him because, you know, this is part of my plan. You know, we have two hostages and you've shown you're a threat. And my plan was initially to take out the threats. So that we could just rescue Beth and Carol. And I think that he was kind of like, this is my plan. I got this. And, you know, they were basically talking him down and it worked. And I just think that part of me wonders, though, if Rick not being able to lead is potentially going to further unhinge him. We'll have to see more of, you know, what happens in the last half of season five. Because part of me wonders if the group is going to let Rick, pardon me. If the group is going to let Rick, you know, take more of a central role next, you know, in the next half of the season, um, because of the fact that a lot of his decisions perhaps would have been better for the group. I mean, if the group would have stuck together, I don't think we would have had a situation at all that what happened in the last episode. That cop would never have gotten away. That cop would not have had only one person watching him. They would have had more people, and they could have brought Michonne with them, that's for sure. So Rick was right on that account not to break the group up, because nothing good happened from that mission. Nothing. The, the 
you know, the bus crash, which was, of course, Eugene's fault. And then they, you know, end up almost getting killed a few times and they run into this big, huge, you know, uh, blockade of walkers and nothing good came of it. Nothing. And it's not necessarily that it's Rick's fault or Rick's like, ha ha, told you so. It's more of just like breaking the group apart in general is never a good idea. Never. And he was right on that. And I would defend, you know, Rick's decision on that one. I kind of understand why you wouldn't go back and kill everybody at Terminus, but there's no reason why that group had to break apart um, other than for story purposes. I think that was a very terrible idea, and I think that they realize that now while they're out there. And if somebody ends up getting killed on this mission rescuing Beth, I think that people are then going to realize, oh, Maybe we shouldn't have uh, broken apart. If we if we would have stuck together, we could have easily rescued Beth and Carol. Because Beth Beth or Carol or both or, or somebody rescuing them might die. And I'm going to tell you what, if you would have had ten people, that would have been a force to be reckoned with. As Rick's group stands, they may not be. And I think that that might end up being the reason why somebody dies in the mid-season finale. So I'll be interested to see if they do let Rick take more of a central um you know role now that abraham kind of realizes just how you know volatile he is and just how the rest of the group realizes that if maybe they would have listened to rick things might have ended up differently so we'll see what happens I, it's definitely always been an interesting point with rick leading and i definitely um hope that they explore that a little bit in the last half of this uh upcoming season definitely a lot to look forward to guys so I'm going to bring this video to a close. I just want to thank you all for watching. If you all have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them. Feel free to subscribe. I have more videos coming. And if you have any video topic that you would, you would like to suggest um, for the mid-season finale or for afterwards, just let me know. I'm going to try to do another, you know, countdown until the season five, um, you know, mid-season uh, premiere in uh, February. I'm going to try to do one of those so that way we have something to look forward to. Uh, throughout the Christmas break and, uh, you know, and for any other holiday, you know, if you're celebrating Hanukkah, if you're celebrating Kwanzaa, whatever holiday you're celebrating um, is definitely great. It's always a nice holiday season. Um, I'm going to hope to, you know, try to make some videos so that way we can count down till the upcoming uh, Walking Dead season. Thanks, everybody. I really hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.